Today's video is focusing on the first 10 things you should do to your brand new Samsung Galaxy S23, S23 Plus, or even S23 Ultra. We're talking about some of the tips and tricks that you need to know so that you get the most out of your brand new device. Some things actually don't come preloaded that you probably didn't know that Samsung provides for you to be able to control and get the best experience out of your device. This is TK, let's go ahead and check out the first 10 things. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So we're going to start off by saying is that on the left here I have the Galaxy S22 Ultra released last year and we have the brand new Galaxy S23 Ultra. Design wise you'll notice that they're very similar except that when you put them close to, uh, enough to each other you'll notice that the camera optics on the back are a little bit bigger than what we have there. But for the most part they're also both the green colors last year's and this year's green. We're going to cover the first 10 things we need to do to be able to get our device set up and customized to the best experience possible. And again, some of the things that you probably did not know is that we're able to actually put in lock screen wallpapers that are videos as well as lock, uh, wallpapers that are videos to our calls. But we'll talk about that in a second. So first and foremost, what I'll probably say is the most important thing that you need to do is when you're setting up your Samsung Galaxy device is to install and run an application called Smart Switch. So the first thing we need to do after we turn on a device and log in with our main account is transfer our data over to our account. So that requires an application that Samsung makes. And the reason why I always put this in there, not recommending a third party application, it's because this is actually really, really good at transferring content, but not only just standard content, how many, regardless of how many Google accounts you have installed on your old device, it will transfer them all logged in and configured directly into the new device. And one of the biggest things you'll notice there is I was able to also transfer my configuration, my lock screen, my uh, setup, my icons, even my custom launcher. I'm actually running Nova Prime here. This is not the default launcher from Samsung. It downloaded it, customized it, and also brought over for me my backup from directly in here. So biggest thing I will probably say again, as a software installation or as a software tool to use, Smart Switch is the best thing. So you want to say basically that this is the old device. You want to send data over to the new one. So say to transfer uh, your watch data, you need to, to put that in there. You can select the cable or wireless. And of course, on the new device, you do the exact same thing. Let's go ahead and bring it over. I'll swipe up and I'm going to say Smart Switch. And it's pretty much as straightforward. You say that this is the receiving data. You're going to, again, customize it saying that it's going to be either an Apple or an iPad device, a Windows phone if they still exist, but again, Galaxy or other Android device. We're going to select that. We're going to say wireless. We'll say wireless on both of them. They're going to be able to actually hear each other. They'll notice a little bit of a configuration. This phone is the S23 uh, Ultra 4945. We get the confirmation code. We'll say allow. They're going to talk to each other. Confirm all the information that you want to transfer. Select what you want to transfer. You don't have to transfer everything. And of course, once you're done, it transfers the data, installs the applications, and you're ready to go. So again, we transferred our data. All the information is in there. I have all my customizations. Even my shortcuts that I have built into Nova Prime were transferred correctly. Even down to the dark uh, dark mode, if you turn that on in the old system. Again, it's one of the best tools that Samsung has made. It not only transfers from uh, Android, but it also transfers it from iOS devices. The next thing we're going to talk about is actually a little bit into the settings. And one of the biggest things you probably don't know is that out of the box, Samsung devices also support high resolution displays. And what I refer to essentially is this is something where on the S23 and S23 Plus, you're supporting 1080p 120 frames per second. But on the S23 Ultra, you're actually able to go to QHD. But out of the box, the phone is set to be full HD plus. Essentially, it's a 1080p resolution display that allows you to actually get the best kind of a combination of battery and performance to get the best long battery life. But I will say that for my usage on the S23 Ultra, that the battery on this is almost hard to kill. Same size battery as last year, but again, the optimizations with the brand new uh, Samsung, well, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy devices seems to be doing pretty good as far as performance. That's one of the things you can also customize is, is the refresh rate on this device. So what you're able to do is go into motion smoothness. You're able to put it either adaptive or standard. Now, standard gives you the 60 frames per second. Adaptive is the only way we can to be able to jump between one, well, zero all the way up to 120. So those are the two things you need to make sure. But again, out of the box, make sure you go in there to get the best experience on your S23 Ultra, jump over to uh, basically WQHD Plus, and that's gonna be the highest resolution. This obviously gets you into the best experience as far as configuring your data from your old device and now, of course, getting the best resolution on your display. But let's talk about some of those hidden features that you probably didn't know that your Galaxy can actually do with the addition of an application called GoodLock. Now, GoodLock is a module-based tool that is basically provided by Samsung but not preloaded to our Samsung devices, and you do need to download and install that directly on your device. And the reason why I mentioned this is because if you notice all of these little options that we're looking in here, these are all little modules that Samsung allows us to have 
to customize the experience. I'm talking down from the option to be able to get some type of even customization here, even to get something like this, where I'm actually able to reach certain parts of my screen that I normally couldn't try, uh, reach before. And that's because this is actually a part of a module. The other thing I'm also able to do is swipe between applications back and forth. And because this is customized in here, I'm able to do that. And this is some of the things that you're able to install. You're also able to customize even like the pen experience on the phone, Wonder, uh, Wonderland in here, Navstar, HomeUp. Also allows us to actually customize the home screen launcher application, which essentially is the one UI experience. You can just basically click on the download button in here. It'll take you directly into the Galaxy Store that's also preloaded on your phone. Click the installation process, give it a few minutes. Once it's done, you'll be able to get the experience. And again, I can swipe back, swipe all the way back into the experience in here. I'm gonna wait for home up to install. Once it's installed, it'll give me the ability of actually accessing it. You'll notice right there, it'll say start, give it access and go ahead and turn it on. One of the biggest things that you're gonna love about this is task changer. We'll go to task changer, turn on the functionality in here and change it from that option that we looked to grid size, which is what essentially is stack mode, a vertical uh, list, or even a sim list, a simple list basically, or slim list. So I like to actually use a stack mode. And you notice right now we only have one app, but since we only have one app in there, let's go ahead and launch one app in here. When I hit the recents app, you'll notice that it's actually stackable. It's actually more of a stacked configuration than what we used to see before. Again, very nice, very functional, and again, adds a lot of functionalities. And I recommend you going through and experiencing, or at least checking them out. We'll focus on a couple of them in a second, but again, Downloading and installing Good Luck from the Galaxy Store is going to be one of your best options. And that's going to be your third option to get the best experience here. Now, I'm pretty sure you guys are wondering and also probably thinking is how did he get this video wallpaper showing directly on my screen? Go ahead and unlock my phone. I'm also customizing here the wallpaper on the device. Now, I like to use an application called Zedge, but the short answer is Samsung devices support video wallpapers on the lock screen and on the home screen. Now, for me, I like to use Dragon Ball Super or things like that. I'll go ahead and select wallpapers. And then once you go in there, you can basically select the image, download it, set it, or of course, save it directly into your device. So I can say here, set the wallpaper. It's gonna ask me if I wanna set it, uh, and it says wallpaper set right now. You can notice it's sitting right there and it looks absolutely fantastic. Go ahead and say download. I'm going to set set wallpaper and it is pretty much set. Now this one does not change the wallpaper on your lock screen. The lock screen is actually pretty much a standard experience. And the main thing you need to do is you download the video itself onto your device. And then once you have the, uh, the wallpaper set directly into your app gallery, you open it up and you say set wallpaper. It's going to ask you if you want to set it to the lock screen or the call background. And it doesn't allow you to actually do video to the home screen. So that's one of the biggest thing. You can set it to the lock screen. And then from there on, once you turn off the display and turn it back on, that's going to be the animation that you're watching whenever you're unlocking your phone. Pretty straightforward. Again, the source of the data is more so to your liking. There are a lot of options on the Google Play Store. I like to use Zedge, but of course, there's also other options available for you. Now, of course, the other thing I will probably say is one of the big main thing that you need to do is set the security features on your device and make sure that you're locking your device with the correct biometrics. So we have fingerprint sensing uh, experience here. Very nice and very quick. You can definitely see how fast it is. We have face re facial recognition. That's also something you can register. I personally prefer to go with fingerprint and a pin. And of course, your preference, you need to basically customize it to your experience. The main reason we say that is obviously is for theft or in case you do lose your device, this protects you and provides you the ability, uh, of basically disallowing people access to your personal data on your phone. As you can imagine, a phone is one of our most personal items that we carry with us on a daily basis. One of the things that you probably saw when we were looking at that video before was the ability of customizing that video as a call background. And that's because on Samsung devices in the dialer, if you go straight into the dialer and into settings, there's a section called call backgrounds. And what essentially you have here is the ability of customizing the background for callers when they're calling you on your phone. So you have the layout option. You can basically set it up in between two different options. And of course, customize the different backgrounds. There are some featured ones, obviously including some emojis or uh, the, the emoji options that we have in here, dark mode and configuration. But I like to set up video wallpaper. So now anytime a call comes in, uh, my uh, beast mode or ultimate Gohan uh, form basically just plays in the background I'm right behind the contact person information. So that's also very nice because we know that sometimes we need to make calls. This is going to make that experience even better. Again, customizing the UI elements are one of the biggest things we can do on Samsung devices these days. In Good Luck, we talked about a couple of things. Well, one of them obviously was uh, the ability of customizing your home screen, and that's going to be home up. But one of the other options you probably didn't know is called one-handed operations. Now, one-handed operation is a module that allows us to actually customize the experience on our device. And essentially here, one-handed operation plus. 
You can go in there and customize different things. I personally have customized it to a certain point where it makes my Galaxy a one-handed device. So what I mean essentially here is I want to do basically switch between two different applications. I'll go ahead and swipe once, swipe again. These are the last two apps I'm switching before. If I want to go back down, that gives me the ability of going back. So that's going to be my normal action. And if I do swipe up as opposed to swipe down, I actually have now access to this virtual mouse. This enables me to touch things that are on the top part of my phone without having to use my left hand. And again, if I want to swipe down, I can put that in there. And if I want to get rid of it, I just basically either launch it again. So we'll go ahead and do it this way. And it'll basically uh, bring up the mouse and then there's a little bit of X you can close it. Now, one of the other things I also love about it is the ability of customizing different things in here. So like I bring in, this is a recent app tool that it easily, I can just go ahead and close everything. And of course, gives me the ability of going to the recent app. Very nice, very customizable, easy to install. Again, available directly on the Google Play Store as well as part of GoodLock. So if you don't want to install GoodLock or you can't download it in your market, just look for One Hand Operations Plus in the Google Play Store, and of course, it's published by Samsung. The next feature that we're gonna talk about is something for Note users or essentially S Pen users that use our devices. Now, if your device supports either the built-in S Pen or the S Pen Pro, this is gonna work for you. In GoodLock, there's a module called Pentastic. Now, Pentastic gives us the ability of customizing our interface to the S Pen, but also customizes the pointer that we have on the phone. I'll give it a second here, because this actually kind of, uh, it throws, uh, the, throws the, <laughs> the, the color configuration on here uh, a little bit off. But what I'm talking about essentially is the ability of customizing the launcher. So out of the box right now, we have this, this is our typical launcher that we have for the S Pen. But if you're a fan of the original version of the S Pen configuration, you're able to even customize it to have it look like the original S Pen functions that we used to have in the past. Uh, we can go even to you know newer generation all the way up to basically bringing it back to the default. That's gonna be one of the nice ones, things that you can do. You can also customize the actual uh, mouse cursor. So out of the box, let's see, we want to be able to have a cursor and it's actually a little bit small. You can't see it. Let's go ahead and bring it back. We're going to make it a little bit bigger. We'll say use. And you can definitely see here, it looks kind of like a little bit of an arrow for us. What I really like about it is using a custom sticker, a custom image. So I'm going to go ahead into gallery. I'm going to go to recent. And this is just basically the logo on my channel. I'm going to go ahead and use that. And now every time I put my pen, every time I'm using it in the UI, my pen actually looks directly like my logo. I can, of course, customize it and bring it in a little bit smaller so that it doesn't take as much space. But it is definitely very, something very, very unique that you can customize to your S Pen. And all you have to do is install Pentastic directly from the Galaxy Store uh, once you install Good Luck on your phone. Okay. The next feature we're going to talk about is something that you probably don't have turned on by default, but you probably should know about. In the settings, there's a section called the Labs features, and that goes under the Advanced feature, and you're able to jump into it. It's called the Labs. And now Labs provides us a few other options to be able to customize the experience on our phone. From the ability of customizing the S Pen, uh, allowing it to basically take screen off memos, also the ability to basically sure that if in case you do leave your S Pen away, the device will warn you, give you a notification for it, uh, voice call effects. But one of the biggest things that is not turned on by default is the game launcher. Now the game launcher enables me to actually have the best experience of gaming on a Samsung device. So you need to be able to turn that on. But one of the other options is under labs. And that's the ability of basically turning on full screen split view, which enables us to actually have a better view for full screen images or full screen applications. The other thing is swipe up for pop-up view and swipe up for split view, essentially is the ability of just doing a two finger swipe up that enables us to jump into split screen automatically without having to actually go in and launch an application and then select it from the recent app and jump into split screen. Uh, basically swipe up to pop up as well, the ability of actually jumping in here and you can basically just minimize in here and make into a pop up window version of your window that enables it to actually just sit there and of course gives you the ability of either minimizing it into, or opening it up. And of course, I can just bring it back in here, click the option. We're also able to minimize it into a little bubble to stay in the background. So I can just bring this in there, keep it in here, sit in there. And when I'm ready to interface with it, click it, it jumps into this one. And of course, I can actually just make it into a full screen or minimize it, and of course, or even jump into split screen. Very nice, very simple. Again, all configurations that I'm sharing with you guys right now is under the advanced features. And you can either customize some of the options in here or jump into labs and turn on these really nice features. Now, these are really nice. You can also customize it even more with good luck. The last thing we're going to talk about is for our advanced users that want to be able to control how the device is running to either extend the battery life or use it to the full potential. Now, one of the things I'll probably say is under battery, just jump in directly into your device. So there's an option for battery and device care. You can see the different options, the battery health, the storage capabilities, the, the amount of RAM we have left, auto optimization, everything in there. Under battery, there's a few other things. We can see the usage of our battery, which gives us the ability of seeing our device, the apps that are using most of our information. But under more settings, we have performance mode or performance profile. 
One thing to keep in mind, by default, the device is set to standard. If you set it to light, one of the reasons I mentioned this is because this device is running one of the most advanced processors on the market. This is actually one of those things that you could do to extend the battery life on your device as opposed to using it in standard mode. Standard mode will basically manage the performance of this device based on what you're using. So if you're playing games, you're using applications that are gonna basically use uh, more, uh, more information or more power out of your system, it'll ramp up the CPU and give you that performance experience. And one of the reasons why you wanna be able to control the configuration is when you're running it in smart mode, it's able to push the device to its full limits when you're using something like, a, say, a benchmark or even demanding applications on your phone. But otherwise, if you wanna be able to get the best performance as far as battery life, again, drop the resolution to 1080p as opposed to the QHD, turn on the battery smart option as far as the light management. So I'll go ahead and jump back into it. And that's gonna give you the best experience overall under that profile. And once you have that turned on, the light mode will not affect most of the day-to-day -day activities as the device is actually quite fast. One thing to keep in mind is that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy is very powerful as a processor. Your daily activity is not gonna be impacted. If you're using this for production, heavy gaming and so on, definitely turn on the smart mode, but this will be also a great little tip for battery saving, of course, on your brand new Galaxy. The biggest thing you probably noticed is that there's a lot of ways to customize our Galaxy S23, S23 Plus, as well as the S23 Ultra. Now, there's a few things in here that I showed you guys that will definitely give you the best experience on an S23 Ultra, although the battery optimization and the rest of the configuration as far as wallpapers and so on work across the board. The biggest thing I would probably say is set the customization or configure the device to the best experience that you would like. For best battery, do those options that I mentioned to you guys. And of course, for best performance, switch it over to smart and of course, get that QHD plus at 120 frames per second resolution. Uh, I've been running it at 120 frames per second, well, the smart mode as well as the QHD plus and the battery's been lasting pretty good on the Ultra. Now, the S23 and the S23 Plus have a slightly smaller battery on depending on the configuration that you go in there. So I would definitely keep it there and of course, customize it to the way you like. Let me know in the comments below, what are your favorite customization options that you've done on your S23 or even earlier generation of Samsung devices? Again, this is some of the best options that you can do to get the device done, ready to go in as little as almost about an hour from getting the device. And of course, there are so many more things you can definitely check out in the future. Let me know in the comments below what do you guys think of this video. Like and subscribe as usual, and I'll see you in the next one.